Hi guys, welcome back to iSimplify. In this video, we are going to cover an interesting topic on circular flow of income and concepts of national income. National income is the aggregate money value of goods and services produced in a country during a particular year. It represents the total income of a nation. Thus, national income equals national product equals national expenditure. The circular flow of income and expenditure simultaneously explains how national income and output are determined. The overall economic activity, production, exchange, consumption and distribution is represented by a circular flow of income, output and expenditure. In the circular flow, the green line shows individuals and households who provide factors of production to firms for producing goods and services households consume or purchase. The blue line shows household spending on goods and services produced by firms. The money spent by households is then used by firms to pay the former for their labor via income. In case of circular flow in a closed economy, households receive incomes in the form of rent, wages, interest and profit by rendering services of the factors to the firms. Firms receive incomes in the form of payments of goods and services by selling their outputs to the households. Households supply factor services to the firm. Households receive incomes paid by the firms. Households spend the factor income towards the firms. And households buy the goods and services supplied by the firms. Next is circular flow in a two-sector economy without savings. The assumptions are, the economy has two sectors, households and firms. Production takes place only in firms. Households spend their entire income on goods and services, that is, there are no savings. Firms do not maintain any inventory. There is no government sector, that is, expenditure and taxes are absent. The foreign sector is absent. In case of circular flow in a two-sector economy with factor and commodity market, household or factor owners and consumers shown on the left-hand side, firms, factor users and producers shown on the right-hand side, Factor market, upper half shows the flow through the factor market. Commodity market, lower half shows the flows through the commodity market. Real flow, represented by the factors of production and goods and services. Money flow, represented by factors, payments and payments for goods and services. In case of circular flow in a two-sector economy with saving and investment, savings are a form of leakage in the circular flow which get injected back in the flow in the form of investments. The flow of savings and investment between households and firms takes place through the financial sector or markets. The financial sector consists of commercial banks, stock markets and non-banking financial institutions. Next is circular flow in a three-sector economy. In a three-sector economy, there are three economic agents, households and firms, financial markets and government. Here, yeah. government income is received in the form of taxes from both households and firms. Government expenditure is spent in the form of transfer payments, salaries to government employees, purchase of goods and services, etc. Injection of income in the economy is the money spent by the government is received by households and firms. Leakages occur in the form of savings and taxes in the circular flow of income and get injected back in the form of investment and government expenditure. When leakages are equal to injections, the flow of economic activities occurs smoothly. In a case of a circular flow in an open or four-sector economy, a four-sector economy consists of the following, households and firms, financial markets, government and world economy. A four-sector economy is an open economy which interacts with the rest of the world. Households export labor and receive remittances. Firms export and import goods and services. Inflow of money form exports, foreign investments and borrowings. Outflow of money for imports, foreign investments and lending. There will be equilibrium in all sectors when savings equals investment, S equals I, government expenditure equals taxes, G equals T, and exports equal imports, X equals M. Importance of circular flow of income is gives a clear picture of the economy, shows the smooth functioning of an economy, guides in the restoration of equilibrium, helps identify leakages and their effects on income and expenditure, highlights the importance of monetary and fiscal policies, 
enables to tackle important economic issues and provides comprehensive yardstick to the performance. Moving on, there are 10 concepts related to national income that are personal income, disposable income, per capita income, real income, gross national product or GNP, net national product or NNP, gross domestic product or GDP, net domestic product or NDP, national income at market price and factor cost and national income at current price and constant price. Let's understand each of these in detail. The first concept is personal income. It refers to the total income received by an individual from all his sources in a given year. By formula, personal income equals private income plus transfer payments or pensions minus corporate taxes minus undistributed profits minus social security contributions. Disposable income refers to the income available with a person for consumption and saving. Personal disposable income is a part of personal income that is actually available in the hands of individuals of households for the purchase of consumer goods and services and for the purpose of saving. Disposable income equals personal income minus the sum of direct taxes, fines, fees, penalties and charges. Per capita income is the ratio of national income to the size of the population. It refers to the average income of the people in the country. PCI equals NCI by P, where PCI is per capita income, NI is national income, and P is the size of the population. Real income refers to income adjusted for inflation. It is calculated by dividing the nominal income at the current money value or price level by the price index for the current period. Gross national product or GNP is the aggregate market value of all the final goods and services produced in a country during a year at the current price level. In an open economy, GNP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M plus R minus P. In a closed economy, GNP equals C plus I plus G, where C is consumer goods and services, I is gross investment including depreciation, G is government expenditure on goods and services, X minus M is the difference between the value of exports and imports, and R minus P is net foreign income from abroad in the form of received overpayments. Net National Product NNP is the market value of the net output of final goods and services produced annually. NNP equals GNP minus depreciation or NNP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M plus R minus P minus depreciation. Here, the depreciation or capital consumption refers to the wear and tear of capital assets that takes place during the process of production. Gross domestic product or GDP refers to the money value of the finished goods and services produced within the geographical boundaries of a country within a specified period. Income earned from abroad is not included in the GDP. Hence, GDP equals GNP minus net factor income from abroad or GDP equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Net domestic product is calculated by deducting depreciation from the GDP. NDP equals GDP minus depreciation. National income at market price refers to the money value of all goods and services produced in an economy during a year, calculated at the current market price. Market price includes indirect taxes and subsidies. National income at factor cost is a measurement of national income on the basis of factor cost, rent, wages, interest and profit used for producing goods and services. It can be calculated by deducting indirect taxes or adding subsidies to market prices. For example, the market price of 1 kg of sugar is Rs 25. This price includes an indirect tax of Rs 5 and production cost of Rs 20. Thus, NIMP equals 25 and NIFC is 20 rupees. Now, if the cost of producing 1 kg of sugar is 28, the government subsidy is 3, then NIMP is 25 and NIFC is 28. Lastly, National income at current prices refers to the total net money value of all goods and services produced in a country during a year. It is obtained by multiplying the physical output of goods with their respective prices during that year. National income at constant prices is a true indicator of the economic growth of a country. It is generally used to find out whether national income has actually increased on the basis of a base year which has not witnessed any economic crisis. For example, a farmer produced 500 kgs of rice in 2004 and sold the same at 6 rupees per kg. Thus, NI equals 500 into 6, which is 3000 rupees. 
However, owing to less rainfall, he produced 450 kgs of rice in 2005 and sold the rice at 7 rupees per kg. Now, Ni equals 450 into 7, which is 3150. I hope you like this video on circular flow of income and concepts of national income. If you would like us to cover more subject topics for you, you can send us an email at info at isimplify.com. You can also feel free to email us your feedback or queries. Follow us on our Facebook page to stay updated on the other iSimplify offerings. Thank you and be simplified.